What's up guys? We are back with another review taking a look at something that I have been looking forward to for whew, so so long and this is definitely just right out of the gate figure of the year material for me in terms of just how excited I am for this figure so hopes are high on this one. We're taking a look today at the Sentinel Toys Ronin Warriors Rio of the Wildfire figure. So this is the first figure in the new Sentinel line for Ronin Warriors. Uh, Bandai did the Armor Plus line years and years and years ago, which they have gotten crazy in price now. And this guy is, well, he's not exactly not crazy in price, but he's attainable. So that's nice, easily attainable. And I could not pass this figure up because Ronin Warriors was a huge thing for me as a kid. I mean, I just got finished watching it a couple weeks ago again. So this is something that's very fresh in my mind and I'm eager to get this guy out of the box. So we've got him here in a really large oversized format box. Uh, you've got shots of the figure in various forms here on the front. You've got shots of the figure in various forms on the side. And then the back of the box has a bunch of product shots showcasing the figure in various states of armor in various poses. So great presentation on top of what I'm hoping is just an amazing stellar figure of the year kind of action figure. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our Rio of the Wildfire Ronin Warriors figure. And this thing is, it's kind of blowing my mind, honestly, because there is so, so much to unpack here, literally and figuratively, because there's just so many parts in this box. Because, as you can see, this guy comes in his sort of just normal, casual attire when it comes to Ronin Warriors out of the box. You have to build him, so to speak. You've got to armor him up. So this guy back here is going to translate into this figure being fully armored up later on in this review. So it's actually going to be a very different review than usual because there's two distinct figures here. There's two distinct versions. We've got the base form and then we've got the fully armored up. And of course that does present challenges as far as articulation. And I'm going to show you what it's like to actually put it together. It's a lot easier than it might seem despite the fact that there are a lot of parts here. But we have to take a look first at how the regular figure looks because I can't imagine there aren't people out there who want to display him like this. Frankly, I kind of want two of these now so I can have both versions at the same time, a fully armored up and this one, although that doesn't make too much sense as far as continuity goes. It doesn't really matter because I'm that excited about this figure. So let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. So this is, again, a Sentinel figure, which is very much kind of par for the course in many ways to a lot of other import brands. This is, however, my first Sentinel product, so it's still kind of new for me, but it's it does seem very familiar to me. So you got a head that can look up and he can look down really good. You've got really good tilt action, and then you've got full rotation there. The hair is a separate piece and does kind of move with you. So it kind of sits like an on the neck, pe neck peg. It's not actually pegged in anything technically. The shoulder pads move up, and then you've got uh, kind of range that goes about that far. He goes all the way around. You've got your butterfly joint, which is really good. It gives you pretty good crossover there. And then you've got your bicep swivel, We've got double jointed elbows, which go really far, and then you've got ball hinges at the wrist. So full hinge, and then you've got rotation. He does have armor pads, armor plating here, so that does stop him from going forwards, but he does a fist really well. You've got a torso cut here, so he goes backwards about that far in conjunction with the waist. He doesn't go forwards too far, only about that far. And then you've got really good tilt side to side, and then you've got, of course, full rotation at the torso and at the waist there. You've got legs that go out pretty much all the way, they kick forward just about all the way. They kick backwards really far. You do have a thigh swivel. You've got double jointed knees. And then you've got rotation, which is pretty good. It's not a full rotation because of the way the, the foot is structured. And then you've got rocker. And then you do have your hinge, but you've also got a really wicked toe hinge there too, which actually does work pretty well. It actually holds him in place quite nicely. And then you've got these uh, little bracket pieces on the back, which are normally in this upright position, but then you can put them down to help stabilize him as well, get him into action poses and help kind of firmly plant him on the ground. So he does move really well. I mean, it's very par for the course with a lot of import brands, but he feels really solid to me. I've had no issues with stuck joints or anything like that, at least as far as moving them. There is one stuck thing that I will have to talk about later, but it's not really an issue. And I'm pretty happy with him. For my first, I guess, exposure to Sentinel stuff in hand, I'm really happy with the way this guy moves. Now, as far as the overall look and feel on this guy, I really can't say enough how much I think that this guy looks like he jumped right out of the screen. This very much is a rock solid anime interpretation of this figure. I think he looks damn near perfect, really. There is, surprisingly, 
a lot of paint on this figure too. What I thought was a majority of molded plastic on this guy, at least as far as the reds, it's actually painted. And you do have to pay attention to that. I have had a few kind of haphazard moments with it, mostly on the armor, just because I, I've been I had to try to figure out how to put him together. So that presented its own issue, but it's one that's hidden. And then I do have a little paint flaking in the actual toe hinge down there. It's it's almost missable. So that's that's okay. But it does it is something to kind of pay attention to. Otherwise, though, I think he looks really good. The the white is not like a shiny white. It's kind of a muted, almost off-white color. Eggshell maybe is a good way to describe it. And then you've got like this, I mean, just this candy coating red color just pops against the more matte finish of the, the Under Armour, I suppose. The line work on it is really fantastic. Everything is super glossy, super vibrant, very saturated. And I just really dig the way this guy looks. I'm really biased in terms of how they look because, frankly, I love everything about the Ronin Warriors look, the design just from head to toe. It's something that has stuck with me for a very long time. You know, this is very much a drenched in nostalgia kind of thing for me. So I do like the way this guy translated to figure form. I think that they got all the details down. The really slender and tapered nature of the chest works really nicely because these guys are teenagers, you know, late teens. And it really comes through that he's not necessarily like this really beefy guy. He's still kind of just a small teenager. And I think it works really Really, really well here, but I just really can't get over the fact that it is so nice in hand. It has a great feel to it, great weight, all the joints feel really, really nice. Everything's uh, just nicely structured, and he he looks just perfect. Basically, there isn't really a lot on this figure that I could even think about changing. And the same goes for the head sculpt, honestly. This looks really, really good. This is one of a handful of face plates, so you do have a few different expression options. This is the more I guess more neutral of the bunch, although he does have a little bit of an expression there. The very anime-inspired art style for the eyes work really nicely here, and then you've got those big eyebrows with a little bit of shading around the mouth. Head size is really good, but what I really, really like about this overall is the hair, because it's not black. It may come through as a little bit blacker than it maybe is in real life, but it's actually blue with black highlights, and it plays up the idea of, in cartoons, black is often highlighted with a dark blue, so it very much works to give you the idea that his hair is black, but the light is hitting it, and it's giving off some sort of highlights, a little bit of shading, so it's not just black on black, it's a little bit of black on blue, and it works really well in conjunction with the very, you know, anime style of hair. So he's got big bangs that are sticking out, he's got these little guys jutting out the back, and, and it looks really good. I'm just, I'm just very happy with the overall presentation, and again, it looks just like him. Now, when it comes to actually armoring Rio up, this is where things kind of take a little bit of a turn because, well, it is a process. It's not exactly difficult, and there are instructions, but if you if you know what they look like, you really probably don't need them. Uh, maybe just to figure out the order of some things, because there are a few pieces that have to go on first, but for the most part, it is pretty straightforward. However, before we even attempt that, uh, we have to take a minute to talk about this guy here. So this is the blank body that's included with this set to allow you to display it in this manner. So in the show, there were oftentimes many scenes where you would have a shot of the armor being seated with no one in it. And that's what this is supposed to be. So it's got a blank body uh, underneath it. It sort of just looks like a void. And it has a little bit of articulation, but it's really only there to help you put it together. So you've got swiveling arms here. Uh, to kind of do that. That's really all they do. They swivel, and then you've got a rotating head. Otherwise, it's just a static piece. It's a static frame, and you plug the armor in uh, the exact same way that you plug it into Rio's actual figure body. I think this is really awesome. Now, it's very specific as far as, like, the scene goes, and when, he, when you are doing this, you obviously cannot have Rio armored up, but if you're interested in this kind of display, I mean, frankly, it makes for a really awesome display piece, and it looks really cool on its own, but I do like the idea of just having that option. If you wanted to do it, it's there, but frankly, it's always going to be on this figure for me, so let's try to put them together. So then we start assembling the figure, and you've got the shoulder pads, and these just peg on the same way that the other ones come off. So you pop them in to the little hooks that are in there, basically, and then they peg onto the shoulder. So you've got your shoulder armor going there on one side, and we'll pop this one over here on the other side. And they clip in really easily. You've had really no issues with that. We've got replacement armor on the wrists, and these are actually keyed, so you will have to put them on the specific ones. I mean, it's not like you can really make a mistake because, well, it just won't let you do it if it doesn't work. And then you've got those. He does have some swappable hand plates as well. And these are actually 
uh, asymmetric. So you've got one, this actually looks really much just like the exact same thing that's already on there. Just peg it in. Uh, and then the other one actually is different. It's got some claws on it, which are pretty cool. And honestly, these are really sharp. So another thing that makes you know that this is not a toy. Those are incredibly sharp, actually. You could, honestly, you could probably draw blood if you uh, if you really wanted to. So there is kind of step one, at least as far as how I've been doing it. Uh, when I ended up doing it the first few times, I didn't actually follow the instructions, and I had no issues, but my order ended up being a little bit different than what the booklet shows, which doesn't really matter. Next, we actually want to put the chest armor on, and this is the one area where you have to do things in a specific order. So pop those up, and then you've got these two interlocking, like, sort of underplates almost. So these two sort of, they're kind of like dark blue color, and they do have a little bit of red on them. And this is one of the areas where I've actually kind of scraped things a little bit. There's a little bit of scuffing because of some of the other parts here. Uh, and thankfully, this isn't actually seen anywhere, and it kind of has to be held together. So some of these parts do actually hold others together, and these are a prime example of that. So you've got those sort of side pieces on, and then we pop the back on, on, and it's going to clip onto that. So this piece here holds these together and then you can put the front armor on and it holds the back together alongside this other sort of inner piece here and it'll clip on and then they connect up at the top to sort of bring him together a little bit better. Now we move on from the torso to the waist, and this is the area that kind of has a lot of stuff as well. So you've got these two pieces here that make the, the sort of side skirt armor. These pieces hold themselves together, but they also have two more pieces that will actually uh, tie it all together. So you've got this front little cod piece here, and this just snaps on over top of the crotch area and the connectors for those pieces, and the same with the back. So there are these connections back here, and then you've got another piece on the back, this big guy, that will connect that all together and it locks it in place while finishing off the armor down there. Now, what really is cool about the way this all works is when you get to the knees, because I do like the idea behind this. I don't know if they did this just for you know paint rub reasons or just to keep things from breaking, but you've got magnetic knee pads, which I really like. It definitely seems like a little bit more of a premium thing uh, because I don't have a lot of figures with magnets in them personally. And I think that's really cool. It just adds a little bit more oomph to them. These things also have, just like the wrist, which uh, I lost it in transition there, we've got the uh, the wrist pads up here that popped off. So we'll put those back on. It'll be like nothing ever happened. And just like these claws here, these guys are really sharp. You know, I'm not sure you really need to watch out for them, but they definitely are sharp. They do want to pop off from time to time. That's going to be a thing. If they pop off while you're positioning, just, you know, put them back on, basically. That's really all that comes down to it. Once they're there, they stay. And then the last piece is the actual toe uh, armor. So these guys, I needed to heat the feet up for them. So these little pieces, there is a lot of paint down in there. So just heat them up and then they'll, they'll pop right off. And then you've got another piece that will pop on here. So you've got more spikes on him to make him even more pointy. And thankfully those are working quite well now that I've loosened them up a little bit. And then you've got him ready to go as far as the full body armor aspect of it. And then, of course, you can put the uh, put the swords back on him because these are, of course, a separate piece. And we'll talk more about accessories here shortly. But you've got basically your fully armored Ronin Warrior minus the head, minus the helmet, which is its whole, it's a whole process on its own because it also comes apart and you also have to take apart the head. So to finish him off completely and just put the helmet on top, what you do here is you pop the head off and this will actually show you what I was talking about earlier where the mullet piece is a separate piece of plastic and then you can disassemble the head. So the, uh, the top part of the hair comes off, the back part of the hair comes off, and then you've got the back of the helmet, which you just pop the faceplate into, and then you've got the front of the helmet, which you pop over top of the face and it plugs into the back. And then you pop him on and you are good to go officially. And we have our fully armored Ronin Warrior 
Rio of the Wildfire, and whew, I cannot stress how cool this thing is in person when you get it fully armored. It's a, it's a whole different figure, just sort of the second half of this figure, but it's a whole different experience to see this guy fully armored up, all the bulk and heft that this thing has to offer. But he does have a lot to dig into, and of course there are accessories to talk about here because it's not just a figure. He does come with extra stuff. But before we get into accessories, let's talk about how this guy looks. So now we've gotten him fully built and fully put together. I really could not be happier. There are, of course, a few little things to take into consideration. So there are a lot of spikes on this figure, and not from like a safety concern uh, point of view, but more from just a breakage point of view. I feel like they're rather fragile, so dropping the knee pads on the ground maybe, or if he falls, there's a good chance you could chip or break those tips. The same with the feet. Not, maybe not with the claw on the hand, but maybe with these uh, the gauntlets here. That said, I mean, I think he looks phenomenal. This really is a fantastic looking action figure. It takes all of the all the cool factor that is on the base body with the the off-white colors and that candy color red and it just ratchets it up to, to 10, really. I mean, it's it's amazing. The the armor on this is really well done. You do, of course, have to worry about maybe some paint rub specifically around the waist. This is where I've really had some issues, and it's not like it's a ton, and you can't see it by any means. It's, it it's, might as well not even be there, but when I take them apart, I know it's there because I did kind of rub a little bit too hard when putting these skirts on maybe the second time I put them together. So it is a little bit of, you know, maybe just a little worry there, but otherwise I think he looks fantastic. The blues are really vibrant and deep, and then you've got kind of these slightly navy blues. The uh, the emblems on his shoulder pads look really good, and it's just one of those things where the design for me is so well executed when it comes to this figure that I really don't have any true complaints. Just maybe more of a pay attention to this, worry about that, maybe slightly when you're putting them together, just be mindful of the fact that there is a lot of painted parts that maybe don't necessarily look like they're painted, and you will have the opportunity, or the potential rather, to rub some paint, chip something here and there, but when it's all said and done, I mean, this guy just oozes cool factor and looks just so damn good. But at the same time, this whole setup does introduce new, maybe not issues, but a little bit of challenges and maybe some changes when it comes to articulation, because obviously. So we've got him armored up, and here is articulation segment number two, just like I mentioned previously. So after we got him armored up, we of course have to talk about what it does to the figure just in a general sense, because there's zero expectations that putting a bunch of extra plastic on him wasn't going to hinder him in some way. And it does. That's not really a negative, because it really doesn't hinder him all that much. It does get in the way in a few places, but he still moves around really, really well. So to start with, you've got a head here that can barely look up. That's one of the big areas, so he can't really look up too much anymore. He can still look down pretty good, tilt side to side is really good, and then mostly full rotation. We do have the shoulder pads, which are kind of cantilevered, so they go up and down, and as you move them up, the inner flap will kind of follow it. Uh, they are reportedly not working that well on some people's figures. Mine seems to be okay. Uh, it definitely seems to hold just fine as I knock more and more armor off. We'll get to that. But they, they do work pretty well. The arms still go uh, all the way out. They don't really hinder anything at the at the shoulder. They still move all the way around. Butterfly joint still works. And then you've still got the bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, and you've got the wrist hinge and swivel. None of that is hindered at all. It's, it's, all, it's all pretty normal because that doesn't get in the way of those joints. The torso is definitely hindered. He can look, he can look, he can go backwards. He can go forwards, not really at all. And you can twist him side to side, but you've got to be really careful because you could definitely scrape the paint on this guy. Uh, so that's one area to pay attention to. The legs aren't really hindered. You've got the extra armor on the skirt piece, but they're hinged, so they allow you to go pretty much all the way out still. Same with going forward and going backwards all the way. You've got your thigh cut still. We've got our double jointed knee, and you do have the armor at the knee to deal with. It is magnetic, as I mentioned, and more often than not, you're probably just gonna knock it off. I do it a lot so far when I'm playing around with this guy, but it's just, you knock it off, you put it right back on, it's not a big deal. And then the foot ankle situation is exactly the same. Nothing gets in the way there. Still got the toe articulation, rotation, and you've got uh, you know rocker down there as well. The big areas for this figure are for sure the head and the torso 
torso. That's really the only areas that I'm having any real hindrance at. The rest of the figure just has a little bit extra on him. The arms aren't hindered. The legs really aren't hindered at all. It's mostly in the torso. Mostly at the waist is the big area because he can't, he can't really hinge forward and he can really only swivel slightly. But he definitely moves a lot better than I expected to. Honestly, I was really worried that he was going to be really hindered and really just over encumbered by all this extra stuff. But when you get it all on him, frankly, it's not too bad. And really, for how easy it is to transform him, he does move around really well. And I suppose lastly, we do have to talk about all the accessories. I've mentioned them a couple times, but what does he actually come with? Now, if you want to count the armor, I mean, it is accessories, but it really is the sum of all his parts here. This is how he ultimately is going to look on most people's shelves, I imagine, unless you want to display him, you know, with the uh, the black body guy here, which I do think is still a really cool thing, but it's probably not going to be my choice when it comes to display. He does come with a number of options as far as expressions, and then you've got options for hands, and then of course the swords. So we'll start with the swords because they are maybe a little surprising in how they are actually doing these. So you've got the scabbard on the back, and they just sort of slot in here. So let's take those out. And you've got two, obviously. He's had them on for quite a while now. So you've got the swords here, and there's a lot of part swapping with these because there's not actually a sword in here. There is just a hilt. So you've got black scabbards, and they have these little uh, indentations on them to slot into the scabbard. And then you've got two swords. So you've got an option for the single-bladed sword with the, well, they're keyed, so you have to make sure you're putting them in correctly. So you've got a sword there. They look really good. Nice luster on them. They're really shiny. They do have a lot of, of size. I mean, they're almost as tall as the figure itself. So you've got two of these. Pop them in there, and they're pretty good. I, I'm not so sure that there should be worry about breaking them. I am kind of concerned about overuse, maybe snapping those little pegs, but they seem to be okay. And then you've got the option to do his his double-bladed sword uh, when he does his, uh, you know, like his special attack, his flare-up now attack. So you've got this big guy here, and this is really cool. I like the idea that they did this. This middle piece is kind of rubbery. It's a little bit flimsy. I'm not going to say it's prone to breaking, but it definitely has a little bit of give to it, so maybe just be careful. But otherwise, I mean, this thing's massive. It's got a lot of size to it. It's just two swords that are fused together, basically. That's really all it is. But it is a very signature thing for Rio, so I'm glad they included it. I'd have been disappointed if that wasn't there. And then we've got a few options as far as hands and faces. So we've got fist hands that come on him in the box, and then we've also got a pair of gripping hands. So these are obviously sword holding hands and all of them have the slots for the pads. So whether you're doing the unarmored or the armored look, you've got the slots and then you've got a set of style pose hands. So non-gripping, just splayed finger hands. Then we've got some extra faces. So we've got a screaming head. We've got a kind of smirking and then looking off to his left, well, your right kind of head. And then the last one is an armored up face uh, that is screaming for when he's actually, you know, doing the flare up uh, super attack. So I really like the idea that they gave us this one because it also matches the armored face that goes along with the blank body for when the armor is just on display. So he does have a lot of stuff. Uh, I mean, if you want to count the armor as a true accessory, I mean, this guy is absolutely more than loaded, but if you're just counting all the actual swappable parts as far as faces and hands and swords, he still comes with a lot of stuff. And frankly, it's just about everything I really need for this guy. So, yeah, I am, well, I'm a big fan of this figure, undoubtedly. And, you know, I, obviously I come from a place of bias, I suppose, when it comes to this figure, because I have been so, so eagerly anticipating this thing. And I have such a fondness for the property, for the show. I'm just a huge fan of the designs for these characters and for these figures. And frankly, I'm really, really happy with the finished product. I think they absolutely knocked it out of the park. The base figure on its own looks tremendous. He moves so well. Sizing is really good. He comes with a great array of accessories, not counting the armor as far as hands, and then the extra face plates and the swords. But when you get all that armor on him, it's just an entirely different figure, a different experience altogether as far as the overall look, the articulation, the feel, the, the heft, the bulk of the figure. And then on top of that, if you are someone who wants to display the figure in just his base form, you get that amazing blank body and the chair to put the armor on, which adds an entirely different level of depth to your display. You know, frankly, I'm probably never going to display him like that, but I absolutely love the option. I think it's really, really cool, and I couldn't be happier with this one. It is definitely something that has lived up to all all of my expectations, and I am eagerly, eagerly looking forward to the next figure in this line. So that's going to do it for this look at the Sentinel Toys Ronin Warriors 
Rio of the Wildfire. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.